My name is Neve Scanlon, and I want you to think about something. When you went to school, you probably learned the basics of reading, writing, and maths. Then it was later on in your life, when, maybe when you went to college, that you learned the skills that you use in your job now. I think this needs to change. Why don't we teach young people these skills earlier? I'm going to tell you about some of the amazing things that I've seen when young people have been given the opportunity to learn to code. Ireland and the world will face so much changes over the next century, and we need to prepare the next generation for this change. So I'm here giving you a talk about change. You might be wondering, what would a 14-year-old know about change? Well, quite a bit. In fact, people my age have already lived through a lifetime of change. Think back to the year 2000. Most of you will probably have a clear memory of the start of the millennium. I don't. It was two years before I was born. It wasn't long after Google was born, too. Nowadays, whenever we have a question, we turn to Google. Just think, how many of you have already used Google today? Back in 2000, there was no such thing as a smartphone. Most people probably had Nokias. My granddad still has a non-smartphone, and he jokes that recently he had to go into a building and put his belongings through a security scanner. And when he went to put his phone through, the security guard said, there's no need to put that through. We don't scan antiques. <laughs> Back in 2000, there, social, sharing on social media wasn't much of a thing. If you wanted to talk to your friends, you went, to, you went out and met up with them, or you phoned them. Now we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and so many sh social media platforms to share on. I've never lived in a time without internet. Before I was born, you probably had to dial up to get online. Remember that screeching cat noise? I don't. <laughs> I've also ne never lived in a time without someone being in space. Nowadays, astronauts tweet pictures of Ireland and the world from space. So as you can see, there's been so much change in the past 16 years. Think of all the change that will be happening in the next 84 years. Not only changes in tech, but changes in the world around us. For example, climate change. There will be more electric cars on the road, which will be better for the environment. We'll be using cool tech like augmented reality every day in our workplace and at home. And we'll be travelling to space and back using reusable rockets. So as you can see, there will be so much change. And, we need to, and to make the most of all this change that's coming our way, we need to prepare the future generation. One really great way to do this, I think, is by teaching young people how to code. Coding is writing lines of instructions which tell a computer what to do. And it can help you make websites, apps, games, and even control robots. Why can coding help us? Well, coding can help with problem-solving skills. And I found that after I learned to code, in school, I was able to find alternative ways to solve my math problems. Coding lets you be creative. Anything that you can imagine, you can make with code. Just think of all the things that we use every single day that are made with code. Netflix, Google, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the list goes on. This is what we need to be telling young people, to show them that coding isn't boring lines of instructions. It can actually let you make really amazing things. And one place that I can see this happening is in Coder Dojo. Coder Dojo are free classes for young people to go to to learn to code with the help of mentors. And that's where I learned to code, in Coder Dojo, Dublin City University, age nine. I remember going in on my first day not knowing anything about coding. And when I came out, I was so amazed that I could make my very own website. Looking back on it now, it was really simple. I just changed background colours, added images and text. But at the time, I was fascinated. I think every young person should have the opportunity to feel that fascination when they've made their very first website, game, app or robot. Since then, I've gone on to make much more complex apps and games. One of the apps that I've made is called Auto Journalist. It's to help journalists and interviewees who live in different time zones to do interviews. The journalist can set up the questions and send them to the interviewee. The interviewee then records themselves on their camera or microphone on their phone, answering the, the journalist's questions. Once the journalist receives the recordings, they will have good media content and will be able to write their piece. Another app that I've made is called Recharge My eCar. It's to help the drivers of electric cars find all the charging points in Ireland and to see whether they're currently in use or not. 
With Ring Charge Point eCar, you can find out whether an electric car charging point is free for you to use before you drive to it. With Ring Charge Point eCar, I've won top prize at the Coolest Projects Awards in 2014. The Coolest Projects Awards is a big comp competition for young people from Coder Dojos all over the world to come together for one day and present projects that they've made using code to other young coders. From going to the Coolest Projects for the past few years, I've seen so many amazing projects that young people have made. There was an app that uses Bluetooth to find your keys, which could be really handy. And one girl programmed a robot that can solve the Rubik's Cube. From the Coolest Projects Awards and Coder Dojo, I've had so many amazing opportunities. In summer 2015, I went to Outbox Incubator, where I spent three weeks living in a big house over in London with 50 other girls, learning about how to run a tech business. The age of the girls ranged from 11 to 22, and it was so cool to see some of the projects that the other girls were working on. There was an app to prevent harassment for women who were walking on the street, a device which would help people with Parkinson's disease to walk. And these projects are solving such important problems. So just imagine that if we gave every young person the chance to learn to code, all the problems we could solve. In December 2015, I won EU Digital Girl of the Year, alongside Yasmin Bay from England. This has opened up so many opportunities for me to meet amazing people, to go to cool events, see how the change in our future will be shaped by tech. GE invited me over to their Minds and Machines Europe conference, where I learned about how data will be able to help with big engineering and manufacturing projects in the future. One thing that I found really cool was how they were using connected technology to get more energy from wind farms. I get to speak at events to encourage more young people to try out coding because it's so important. I'm a member of the Digital Youth Council of Ireland and we're a group that makes sure that the voice of young people in Ireland is heard in science, tech, engineering, maths and education. I've been so lucky to meet other people that also have the vision that young people need to learn more about tech. In January, I went to the World Economic Forum in Davos where I met Will I Am, Bono, Ariana Huffington and Mark Benioff who had Salesforce. While I was over there, I helped to run a Coder Dojo session for some of the local school children in Davos who had never coded before. They loved it. From my journey, here are a few things that I've learned about getting young people interested in coding. If they already have an interest in a TV show or a game like Minecraft, then link that interest with coding. My brother, who was eight years old at the time, is really interested in Minecraft, and he tried out the Minecraft Air of Code. The Air of Code is a website that encourages kids to try out simple coding for just an hour. It links with movies like Frozen and Star Wars. My brother was so amazed that he could edit things in the Minecraft game using lines of code that he could write himself. We definitely need to make sure that we're telling young people that coding is all about creativity and making things. We need to see more girls in tech as well. One way that I can see this happening is, girl, is Girls Hack Ireland. They host one day events for girls to come along to with their friends and do workshops on science, tech, engineering, maths and coding. Another way is Coder Dojo Girls. Coder Dojo Girls was set up a few years ago in Coder Dojo DCU. It's a Coder Dojo session for girls to come along to and they can learn how to code while they're surrounded by other girls their age that are interested in tech. While I was over in the World Economic Forum in Davos, I heard Ariana Huffington say that whenever you're giving a talk, you need to leave people with something to go away thinking about, something that they can do. So my message is, kids need skills. What can you do? You can mentor or set up a Coder Dojo. You don't need to have that many tech skills to set up a Coder Dojo. You just need to be able to support the kids and make sure that they're creating cool things. Another thing you could do is to introduce kids to online learning to help them learn new skills. So if you have children, nieces or nephews, show them things like Khan Academy for maths. 
So let's give kids the skills for all our futures. Thank you.